Okay, we are rolling. Good morning, gang. David Guppel, Thinker Farmer here. In the background, we have the uh, sheep grazing at one of the lease farms. Um, it's the month of May, so they've been lambing. We're about three weeks in. Today, I wanted to address a question. Uh, somebody asked me at the last grazing school, um, why am I so interested in herbivores? Um, why, why do I like them over, say, gardening, over raising broiler chickens, over raising uh, layers, I mean, or pigs even? There, there's a lot of different options out there. Um, and I started out in farming thinking that I was going to do gardening because I grew up on a small acreage. And after that, I ended up proceeding to raise a lot of broiler chickens. Um, I've raised over 20,000 broilers in several different uh, states or areas of the U.S. And, uh, and then I raised a lot of pigs. I did a lot of pork production. I also did a lot of haymaking. Uh, what is what has caused me to move away from raising broilers, to move away from raising pigs and gardening, etc.? And what are the reasons? And I'm going to try to keep this video brief and to the point. So I'm going to simply name the top reasons why I like herbivores, and specifically beef, cattle, and sheep. So, why herbivores? Okay, so the first reason is that herbivores work at scale. The reality is, Broiler production, pork production. I'm gonna make that word bigger. Broiler production, um, pork production, gardening do not work at scale. If you want to manage hundreds of acres of land and see it improve over time, you can generally um, kiss gardening and broiler production and pork goodbye. Nothing scales up as easily as beef. Um, I think that point kind of stands for itself. And haymaking, um, haymaking does work at scale, but um, hay, making hay, you've got, uh, you end up having equipment that you have to move around. It's uh, single use equipment generally. It depreciates um, over time and you have breakdowns in the field, and so there's a fair amount of stress that comes with haymaking. And there are stresses involved with raising um, cattle and animals, but as I'll discuss later on, there's not as, as much time and strain involved with them. Because with hay, you have a narrow window where you have to get everything done, and in order to get the right moisture content. With cattle, if you move them an hour or two late, if you have to be gone for a few days, um, there's more flexibility. So next reason is that I like uh, raising herbivores is they require very little in terms of fixed inputs or costs other than management. You really don't need, um, with broilers, with gardening, you have to generally haul in fertilizer. You may have to haul in uh, irrigation systems on your gardening. Broilers, you've got literally tons of feed that you'll end up feeding. Pigs, same thing. With herbivores, um, there's just no, there's just very few inputs. You're really, you have some fence, and that's a one-time deal. You have a water system, and even that might be a one-time deal if you're just building ponds. And mineral and salt, but mineral and salt, I mean, you buy a, a 50, 50 pound bags of salt by one or two tons in a year and that may be all you need um, of course if, with Greg Judy he uses a lot of mineral but still it's it's uh, it's very low input low input um, and then the next reason is with herbivores, they aren't run by a strict time clock. I kind of alluded to this earlier, but we have the technology today where you can set up
set up automatic uh, gate openers and uh, you can have the cows literally move themselves. Now, you wanna be careful with that because if you are not at the farm observing things, situations can get out of hand. But generally speaking, um, you can go out there, you can move the cows, and I mean, that's, it's, it's really quite simple. It's not like broilers where they need multiple checks a day. It's not, uh, it's not maybe like pigs where a feeder can fail or get clogged um, or where pigs clog a waterer. You just end up with, with a much, I mean, I'm not gonna say a much simpler system because there's a lot of management and how-to that goes in, but once it is set up and you have mastered it, there's less bugs and things that can go wrong and there's not as regimented of a schedule. Beef takes several years to grow out. Um, broilers take literally six to eight weeks, pigs six months. So because it's a compressed time period to grow out your finished product, every day is that much more intense. Beef cattle are less intense in, than na in nature than broilers are. And uh, I guess the next thing would be, for me, I find herbivores more enjoyable because they cause more dramatic land improvement if done correctly. Now, I will, I will make a caveat to that, which is that with broilers, I've never seen anything grow greener grass than raising them on pasture. But that requires daily moves, that requires several checks a day, and most importantly, it requires a huge amount of grain to grow out those broiler chickens. And same thing for pigs. With beef cattle, you can cause dramatic land improvement without anything other than just moving them. Just move the animals every day. And so that's the third reason that I really love herbivores is uh, I'm gonna put down dramatic land improvement. or just for the sake of our discussion, dramatic improvement. So there you have it. Reasons I like herbivores, scale, input, and improvement. And I may or may not have mentioned this. Oh, bear with me, gang, I'm gonna check my time. My videos have been kind of long. Okay, we're at seven minutes, we're good. Yeah, so. My mission as a farmer is to touch land and people and leave them both better than I found them. And I cannot think of anything that does this better than herbivores. Um, having to build a system where you're dependent on lots of grain, to me that's not leaving the land better than I found it. It's giving it a crutch that it will have to have long term. Again, I'm not saying I'm against broiler or pork production. I did it for years. Love it, I think it's great, but if you're going to build a system, herbivores, historically in nature, has always been the foundation of that. You have to start by having a well-managed um, herbivore and a grazing system on the landscape to improve it over time. Because grass grows and, I mean, it builds soil, it sequesters carbon, it improves fertility, it stops erosion like nothing else. And the herbivore is central to managing grasslands. So, um, and I'll add, I'll add two more, well, two more reasons um, why I like herbivores. One is challenging myself. You know, um, Broiler production is its own animal and has its own challenges. Um, pork production has its own challenges too, but the fact that you have a well-balanced rationed grain that you're feeding to the animals basically guarantees that you're not gonna have a lot of major hiccups. With grazing management, there's a lot more things that can go wrong because everything depends on the soil underneath your feet and therefore it heavily depends on your management. When you're trucking in grain for broilers or pigs, it makes it very easy to uh, cut
cover up poor management because you've got such a good quality feed. Um, I like being challenged. If, if there's a, uh, a mountain out there, then I want to climb it just because it's there. Um, not because the things in life are easy, but because they are hard. Um, I enjoy a challenge and herbivores is a challenge. It's, there's a lot more management, there's a lot more thinking and a lot more know-how, and there's also a lot more job security in becoming a master at grazing than there is at raising broilers or pork production. And then the last reason that I really like, and then I'm gonna close with this point, the last reason that I really love herbivores is community. And the deal here I'll put a star by that because at the end of the day, it's always about the who in life, not about the what. Community. Um, it's a lot easier. A community, any successful community or farming community starts by having a well-managed land base. It's very, I mean, to find the land and to find a substantial amount of land to manage and build a community around can way more easily be done with herbivores than can with broilers. Broilers, you can take five to 10 acres um, and you can make one full-time living and uh, you're on a very small land base. There's something about having 100 or 200 acres that becomes a, a place for people to spread out on and really enjoy the nature that's there. Um, herbivores by nature watching them it's just way more enjoyable than watching a broiler chicken shuck down feed um, and again I'm not saying broilers is not um, once you the deal is once you have a well-managed land base beautiful grass beautiful trees something that your community come out to and enjoy and be a part of broilers becomes a really successful add-on it's uh, but at that point um, you know, nature baths last, the ecosystem has declared the herbivore is the foundation of a successful ecological community. So I think in communities in general, starting with um, grass finished animals is the secret to building community. Anyway, that's all for now, gang. Um, blessings for the journey and we'll be in touch. Oh, and I might as well, since I'm here, gang, let me go ahead and just pick this camera up because y'all couldn't get a good view of the sheep. So they're just out there on the landscape. They're still lambing. You can kind of see some of the little lambs in there sticking their heads up. Anyway, I'm going to try to get to church. So uh, y'all have a great day. Blessings.